All right, welcome back. Still happy celebration to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Happy Eid al Maloud, yes. Um, to all our Muslim brothers and sisters, and to everybody the way they actually enjoy themselves today, as today in a public holiday. But now, time for us to talk to a Kajas person in the house. We will talk to us about how technology is very important, especially in teaching the next generation um, through um, technology. Now, in a person where gather better experience, make I just send you some of the experience where you gather. Him now, global talent leadership and learning leader. Now, also a certified NLP practitioner. Um, and business coach with more than 15 years experience in the entire value chain of the learning discipline. Now, in my technology enabled learning and um, learning innovation enthusiast and driver, as well as a sought after conference speaker. If I tell you in profile, I'm not going to actually end this interview today. But join me, welcome Ari Akinola. We're going to share us how it is very important for us to be technology driven as we got to learning. Good to have you in the house. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, now let's just go into the conversation. How okay. important is technology in learning? It's absolutely important. It's very, very important if I have to, to rate how important it is. Um, these days, everything, almost everything is driven by technology, um, all the, the, the types of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, VR and all that. And learning is not uh, excluded uh, from what technology can actually support. And with the uh, you know, time that people don't have any more attention span of an average adult is about three and a half minutes and all that. People work in different parts of the world, different parts of Nigeria. I mean, people live on the mainland, they work on the island, and sometimes you want to run training and all that. So mm -hmm. technology is one thing that can really support and enable learning, uh, make it more scalable uh, for more people to be reached. Now, we're not saying in the world now, technology actually they drive some of the development in the world. And Absolutely. third world country is not actually left out, uh, which Nigeria, sadly, we did part of. <laughs> and we don't hear of stories, not just stories, a lot of research where they talk to Nigeria is still backward as regards to technology. Now, talking about learning through technology, how you don't actually perceive our savviness as regards to technology? Well, I think if we compare Nigerians with other people, yeah, we, we have a lot of um, catch, catching up to do. Okay. But honestly, there are a lot of good Nigerians doing good stuff when, where technology uh, enable learning is concerned. Yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of people. Perhaps if they have a better enabling environment, maybe they will do more. Oh. But Nigeria people, they really do well for technology uh, in terms of learning. A lot of them, a lot of people. Are you serious? I'm very serious. <laughs> Really? I've, yeah, I've met, I've met a lot of Nigerians doing very nice stuff. Uh, there are organizations who support um, technology um, projects. Mm. And then a lot of times, I mean, the first place they want to come to in Africa, maybe other than South Africa, is Nigeria and maybe Kenya. Uh, if you don't really, I mean, there's a lot of things going on. There are a lot of tec technology hubs in, uh, in, in Nigeria, in Lagos to be precise, in some in Enugu, I believe. So there's a lot of these things happening here and there. I'll say if they are well enabled from a uh, you know, financial point of view, from uh, access to, to resources, even as little as power, <laughs> you know, they will probably be able to do much more. Uh, but of course, as many other things, Nigeria has a lot of catching up to do when it comes to comparing us with uh, some other developed you know, world. But you know, I, I still believe that people go actually want to see their facilitator face to face because we're talking about learning. Absolutely. Instead of staying in the four walls of your of the school or of one class, just mm -hmm. listening to lecture, mm -hmm. you can actually learn just online. Lecture, exactly. And you understand. But some people still prefer say they want to see their facilitator, the teacher, the one they, they see and face to face, the one they touch them, <laughs> <laughs> rather than say they're going to go online and mm -hmm. they listen to they look a uh, video. Mm -hmm. You don't ever see people with that kind of uh, mindset. A lot. So. People learn in different ways. There are different types of learners, right? There are visual learners, there are kinesthetic learners, there are you know, people that when they listen is when they learn well. Some when they see is when they learn well. Mm -hmm. Some like to practice. Right? If you look at what people want to have in a classroom, they want engagement. They want feedback. They want exactly. to ask questions yes. and then the person will respond. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there's technology that can do all that. Really? Exactly. So there are webinar platforms where Someone is teaching remotely from somewhere. You join in the comfort of your home. And if you want to raise your hand, there's a place where you can raise your hand. In fact, some of them have uh, you know, tools where if, some, if you want to clap, if there are things you can press to clap, 
that you actually agree with what the person is saying, you know? So technology can enable that. It's just that people need to shift their mind from the traditional settings to something more progressive, I would say. I think another factor is mm. the access to internet. For instance, we will do Nigeria. Exactly. If I want to do <laughs> e-learning, the hell I miss I'm going to spend thousands of naira to get data. To, you know what? That is true. I mean, we have band, data is one thing. In fact, sometimes it's not just the data, it's the bandwidth of the data. It's probably not strong enough to drive the learning. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, if you look at the quality of education you're getting, so let me give an instance. People want to study abroad, for instance. You, don't, you, you, don't have, you couldn't get a visa, maybe. You don't have money to fly out, but you have money to buy data. It means that you can study in Nigeria and take courses on good learning platforms where instead of using the money you're going to use to fly, you can use to buy data, right? I just want to experience the cold weather. <laughs> <laughs> people don't say, I just want to experience the cold weather. <laughs> you know, even some of them are now blended yeah. in, 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 in the way that... So it's not just distance learning, yes. and it's not just on-site learning, it's blended. So, you know, you can do some remotely online, and when you want to feel the cold weather, you fly and feel the cold <laughs> weather and come back. So, you know, so you're not really leaving your job. Mm -hmm. Because another thing is, why people don't, a lot of people, why they know they further their education, we say, they don't get another job. If you leave that job now, you go to school, you're not sure, say, whether you come back, so you the go, job will they wait, go, for they you. wait for you. Mm -hmm. So there are now a lot of, uh, online learning, on, online programs you can take in such a way that, you know what, you only travel when you're on break. At least an average adult working in a corporate will have at least about 20 to 25 days, uh, leave days in a, in a year. In fact, some companies even give you days for education leave, uh, school leave, so to say. So you can take them to write exams or you can travel to your school and at least see the building take some selfies and show people this is the school I, will, I attend, you know. I mean, I did my MBA completely online. Mm. Completely online. I did my MBA online. So the, the reality is that happens. So you, people should not say, I don't have time to develop myself. People should not say, I don't have the money to pay for that big uh, MBA. What can you start doing now with the technology that is available? I completely like that. Now, you talk about um, U-Shift um, just um, behind the scene. Me and you been talking about um, Tell me a little bit about U-Shift and how important it is for us. Hmm. So what, we, what uh, U-Shift is about is, um, I mean, there are a lot of learning platforms out there. You know, we can mention all their names. There are many, many of them that a lot of people are contributing content to. We thought that, you know what, there are some Afrocentric content where Africans can teach Africans. And then what platform can we create to enable that? So if I'm an African and I need to learn something in the context of Nigeria, I can't be listening to a Harvard professor necessarily. Mm. Maybe oh, they, shui, shui, oh, shui. you know, I don't even know what's in there they talk. Oh, that's what you're both talking. Exactly. You, know, mm -hmm. you, know, you want somebody where no, know, where feel break them down mm -hmm. to my style. Exactly. So u is that kind of a platform where we, we get local providers. So I teach on u for instance, local providers who understand. Well, if, if somebody in the U.S. teaches time management for Lagos, it, it won't work. Oh. Go see, okay. Come Lagos <laughs> go now, see. you go see our traffic. Exactly. Uh, tell me how to take, manage my time even in traffic. In traffic, exactly. Mm -hmm. For someone with in Nigeria, if he tell you, say, this is how it works here. So for such people, they can come on U-Shift and become a content provider. Wow. And then they can teach anything. And in fact, then someone in Nigeria who wants to learn time management in the context of Lagos can learn online. You don't need to go to any classroom. You can learn on your own time. So it's a concept of learning anytime, anywhere. Hmm. So you can do it. But what kind of courses can I actually learn on U-Shift? A lot of them. So there are from personal development personal courses. Development courses. Okay. Uh, we, are going, we are loading some new business courses now. Okay. In fact, we are developing one. Now, it's not loaded yet, but we are developing one called the business of uh, entertainment. So if you want to go into entertainment, managing talent, that is going to be there. We're loading, somebody's teaching on voice. We're loading that very soon. So things that are real, things that people can learn and use to do something for their lives. I actually like this because most of all those online courses where you see, now you both a teacher. Exactly. And in some cases, we know they understand this, but you both they talk. It, exactly. But if we get a platform where Nigerians, they actually teach Nigerians, or Africans, Africans. they teach Africans, they go understand, say, this is our predicament to you. Exactly. Make I teach them exactly. how you actually did. Yeah. But how the reception not be as it has to your shift? So it's been good. So we started U-Shift as a, as a physical learning uh, solution, classroom. So we've done that since 2001. I mean, across different countries in Africa. Uh, the technology piece started gradually, and then we recently just built an app. 
So we have a few hundreds of, well, not thousands already, mm -hmm. people that have downloaded the application. We have few uh, numbers of experts as well. Of course, you know, with experts, we need to be sensitive. Yes. So we can't just allow anybody to put anything there. So we are screening the experts, but the users, anyone can just go online to Google Store, Apple Store, and download Ushift. So with that, we're getting a lot of traction. People are downloading and they're using it gradually. You know, it's, you go experts say, mm. since it's online, it should be cheaper. But I'm sorry, in some cases, if I want to learn online, you mm. know they day cheap. Yeah, yeah. I could just prefer to make I just go one kiosk where they nearby we go, we go teach me how to eat with my fork mm, and knife mm. than say I go online. Why is online learning so expensive? Well, it's supposed to be more scalable and cheaper. In fact, one of the top benefits of online learning is affordability, is cost effectiveness. Mm -hmm. The challenge is it's also a game of numbers. So you design your e-learning once and one million people can take it. So if it cost me 10,000 naira to develop it, it's some cost, I've done it, it should be cheaper. But a lot of times, the reason why it looks expensive is because, again, again, the online learning available, we're designing in the US, right, mm. is in dollars. <laughs> so the moment you start paying dollars, it becomes expensive, so which is why we're bringing it to Africa, so that, I mean, no African currency is kind of, you know, bigger than Nigeria yes. currency in a way. You know, you can it's not sort too of, much. Sort, you know, sort of, of it's sure. manageable, sure, you know, mm. manageable. But what we can, so we can actually, so it, it can become more affordable for people, you know, to, to download them. Right. In so, fact, some of the courses on U-Shift is free, by the way. Oh, it's free? It's, currently, every course on U-Shift is free. Wow. Currently. Yeah. So all I need to do if I want to actually learn something very important to my mm -hmm. career, I just need to download the app, is that it? Download the app and the contents are there right now. Amazing, amazing. All right, e-learning is very important to the advancement of any country, especially as regards to learning. So if you know, say, you are actually get involved mm. to technology-driven learning um, platform, you can try it, you should. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You Ari, much say you come inside the house. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.